What's up, everybody? It's Tuesday morning. I'm just consuming some YouTube. I was watching some WSX. Congratulations to Ken Roxon, Dean Wilson, all those guys. Um, they're ready for Supercross. Uh, so yesterday I was watching some uh, commentators on uh, the UAW and the ripple effect that they're going to cause for people to, to buy new cars. So I think it was like 15% instant raise for most of these UAW workers <clears throat> times how many employees. So that math, like your labor percentages, your labor costs have to be factored into anything that you're providing for products for, for sale. So this is instant. So how instant are you going to see car prices hop? So if 15% labor cost costs went up, you got to expect at least 15% increase in a vehicle. It's just it's just the way it is. Or the business system won't work. If I have to pay 15% more for oil, the consumer's going to pay 15% more for oil. So, and this is a, a t this is like a tier. So now this is an instant raise they got and then next year they'll get another raise and next year they'll get another raise. Right now they're saying 80% of the the population can't afford a new car. 80% they're saying new car payments were averaging $800 a month last year, or just under $800 a month. And then they just did another comparison, I think it was $760. That is a lot of money. Every month they'd be shelling out for a new car payment. So what they were saying is, of course it's going to raise the cost of the cars. And now the manufacturers are going to have to give incentives to try and offset that, which costs them bottom line dollars to their shareholders, and how long will they continue to do that to have lower profits? The only positive thing I heard that of this is that it may force the auto manufacturers, right, may force the auto manufacturers to start producing cars that are affordable. Um, they sell all these cars that are trimmed out to these people, or for the people, or for the public, that have every option. How many people are using every option in their car? They're not. I mean, you can have $5,000 in options or $10,000 in options in the snap of a finger today, if not even more. And I've always said there really isn't too many people who make an affordable vehicle anymore. You have Kia, which maybe has one, and then you have Mitsubishi that has one, and Honda that has one. Like, that's... There is consumers out there who would consume an affordable brand new car you don't need power windows in your car i mean it's just a necessity i mean it's not a necessity do you need heated seats it depends on where you live you know it depends on what your budget do you need moonroof do you need lane obstacles and this and that and you know every chatter and bell we've been doing it for hundreds of years without it the problem is the people have become less upstairs and rely more on the car to do the driving than they are and there's still tons of accidents so instantly you're going to start seeing new car prices pop it's just impossible now well like i said before all these other auto manufacturers are already giving their employees that that baseline raise because they know that this, this, is, this is even a, a bigger wave that's coming so now they're like all right well since the uaw set the standard now to to make these people happy they're gonna have to do the same thing at honda and kia and daewoo or whoever else is in business anymore mercedes so now you're gonna see every product line across the board raise their price at minimum 15 percent. if you're giving 15 percent raise to 5,000 employees or 10,000 or 100,000 employees that is going to be a huge impact on the purchase of a new car i for one lease and i'm done after this lease i'm done i'm driving old cars and I don't care if it blows a radiator every three months. I don't care. It's not $800 a month for a new car payment. And my car payment with insurance is just about $800 a month on a forty-five dollars or $50,000 vehicle, lease vehicle. So I, for one, am done. I'm going to drive a 10-year, 20-year-old, 10 or 20-year-old vehicle, and I don't care. If it breaks, I'd be happy to fix it. You know why? I'm not shelling out that money every month for a car 
that you're only going to get rid of in, in three to five years anyway. That is the biggest waste of money. I'd rather invest in my old car. Um, if it needs paint, go get it painted. Big deal. If it needs rims and tires, go buy rims and tires. Your old car is not going to cost you $800 a month. That's just the reality of it. <clears throat> and if it does, if you put 12000 just do a simple math. Just round it up. $12,000 a year into your old car. Oh my God. You pimp my ride. Think about that. You don't have heated seats, you can have it at it. You don't have power windows, you can have it at it. You don't have navigation, you can have it at it. All the stuff that they sell that... Uh, Front cameras, back cameras, they have all that stuff. You can add it right to your car. It doesn't look crappy like the old days. Um, so just think about that. But this is this is going to be devastating. Uh, and the people who can afford to buy new cars, you know, or say or they can afford to buy a new car at $800 a month and they're comfortable, now that same car is going to cost you $1,000 a month. Now you're talking, you're getting heavy. That's getting crazy. But if they bring back entry level cars, like ten, twelve thousand dollar brand new cars, base models, if you remember in the seventies and eighties, they had the uh, Aries K car, they had uh, Honda Civic, cheap Honda Civic, Ford Fiesta, or Festiva. Um, dude, there was just so many. Cheap cars, a Dodge Omni. There were so many cheap cars. And the engineering wasn't that great back then, but it was a new car. So I'd be interested to see, you know, what they come up with for, you know, cars that aren't $30,000 anymore as your base model car. I mean, I think your base model car starts at $20,000 right now. And that's two fifty a month, if you think about it, with, you know, minimal down. It's still a lot of money. It's still a lot of money. So I don't know who's following us, but I'm staying close to it because it affects me and my business. You know, I would like to see more people hold on to their older cars and invest in their financial future more than say, oh, I'm tired of fixing this car. Are you tired of spending $800 a month on nothing? Think about that. Are you tired of spending $800 a month on nothing? Or have an older car and fix it. Fix it and repair it. They sell seat covers today. They sell... You can replace just about everything in your car. My Sequoia has 300000 I put new seat covers on. Not even seat covers. New seat cushings and uh, the vinyl. Um, rear view mirror. Replace that. Things that look 10 and 20 years old are easily replaced today. Even an engine. If you need an engine, you can get them replaced too. Transmission. Suspension. Just think about that. $800 a month average person's paying right now for a car payment that is insane thanks for watching